The next one is the famous hitting the rock. He's banging on the rock, and you can hear the banging sound coming through to the microphone inside of his suit. So sound cannot travel through a vacuum. You shouldn't be able to hear this banging sound in his suit. Now, some people ask me, they say, well, maybe it's just the vibrations coming through the suit up to the microphone, but that's not possible because he's not wearing a solid suit. If you were inside like a solid tin can and you knocked one part of the tin can, yes, that sound would reverberate through the tin can. But the suit is flexible, right? So the sound cannot reverberate. Keep it in sight here for a minute. Is that it? Yeah. Go ahead. Try hitting, uh, there you go. Can you use the other end against the right side of the rock? I'll press it. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. I'll get that one. Wait a minute. Be careful down in there. The whole thing is going to fracture off here in a minute. Just want to... Trying. It's trying to fall. Don't wear your hand out. That's good, Gene. Wait a minute. Let me give one more whack, because the whole thing is... Uh... Nah, that's too tight. Let me get that other piece. Okay, bag 476 is the uh, rock sample with a little bit of the soil near it. Uh, but chip, chip off the rock. And it's the... Uh... Watch it, G. Here's the other chip. If I go down there, that thing's about 15 feet deep. Right. Got it. Okay. Okay. Now, you think you can chip off the uh, other side of that plane up on the uh, yeah. edge? Yep. Then we'll get the soil. And maybe uh, just a small rock, non-chipped. Un Let me tell you, my hands from that drill. Yeah, I'm sure they are. They really know I've been out here today. Keep it in sight here for a minute. Is that it? Yeah. Go ahead. Try hitting, uh, there you go. Can you use the other end against the right side of the rock? I'll press it. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. I'll get that one. Wait a minute. Be careful down in there. The whole 
whole thing is going to fracture off here in a minute. Just want to. Let me get that other piece. Okay, bag 476 is the uh, rock sample with a little bit of the soil near it of a chip. Chip off the rock. And it's the... Uh, watch it, G. Here's the other chip. If I go down there, that thing's about 15 feet deep. Or there's another scene where he throws the hammer and it hits the ship and it's like, tuck. You can hear it tick and hit the thing. The recording of the audio is being done on Earth. So if somebody at Mission Control says something, like he's going to ask a question, so his question will go out, and that takes 1.6 seconds for the speed of light to reach the moon. And then when the astronaut hears that, he replies, and it's going to take 1.6 seconds for his reply to come back. This is a 3.2 second delay, must be there. But the delay must come between when Earth says something and when the reply comes back. Okay, that's where the delay has to be there. Now, there are many examples of this. For example, American Moon. That 
That's it. You got it right there. Okay, that's a that's a, a football size rock. It's a great Scott size. Sure, you want to rock that big, Houston? Yeah, yeah let's go ahead and get it. Up. That's a twenty pounds of rock right there. Yeah. Okay. That's a big class in it, John. It sure is. Came down. All right. Houston, Roger, we copy and we're standing by for your 2 TV. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Coming down the ladder now. Yeah. 
Okay, I just checked uh, getting back up to that first step. Uh, it's uh, not even collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. Roger, we copy. It's a pretty good little jump. Buzz, this is Houston, F2, one one sixty a second for shadow photography on the sequence camera. Okay. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, although the surface appears to be uh, very very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Brown mass uh, is very fine. Yeah, I'm gonna step off the lamb now. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And spacecraft films are the original unedited video clips. Let me tell you, Bob, this flag is a beautiful picture. You see that? Okay, you're, uh, it's partially covering the rover, but I think it's a pretty good shot. How's that? Let me get the focus right. In case you missed it. Okay, you're, uh, it's partially covering the rover, but I think it's a pretty good shot. How's that? Let me get the focus right. One more time. Okay, you're, uh, it's partially covering the rover, but I think it's a pretty good shot. How's that? Let me get the focus right. Obviously, not only does the camera suddenly cut, a transition fades the two clips together. This ultimately proves that the footage has been edited. As was the case with the Apollo 10 footage, someone has been caught cheating here. You see that? Okay, you're, uh, I'm having trouble with my partially covering the rover, but I think that's a pretty good shot. I'm unable to get it to go left right now. How's that? Let me get the focus right. You see that? Okay, you're, uh, it's partially covering the rover, but I think it's a pretty good shot. How's that? Let me get the focus right. Now, the thing you're looking at here is the sun reflecting in his visor. You understand? You're looking in the face mask, the visor of the astronaut, and then you can see the sun. I'm going to go to full screen. We can watch the sun on the ISS spacewalk. He puts down the visor. Again, you see the sun's reflection. Now we're coming over here to Apollo. <laughs> I'm going to show you the sun's reflection here. Oh, look how big that sun is. <laughs> it's a huge stage light. So the excuse NASA will make is something like, well, it, it depends on the angle of the curvature of the visor.
but that's not true because in both images, I'm showing you the same angle of the same visor in the ISS, same visor curvature, same angle of the sun. So you can't make that excuse. Now we've got our last two smoking guns. What we're looking at is the exhaust coming from the booster rockets. You can see this chemical equation, C2H12N4 plus N2O4 equals CON2 plus H2O. You can see the blast of steam, right? Yeah. Yes. So there you go. That's the steam. Now we come here. I'm just giving another example. The digital sparks. Right. So the point I'm trying to make here is that you should see steam coming out of the bottom of this engine. Contact light. Something else. That is amazing. Unbelievable. Oh my god. Hey, you wanna ask him? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Houston Intrepid. Intrepid. Where are we? Oh. 